for me to step on a scale, honestly, it would be the equivalence of an alcoholic having one glass of wine. Okay, perfect. This is sitting on top of my laptop, so I didn't want it to like, and that's my cord. <sighs> Hello everyone, my name is Happy Black Legends, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Yes, so, every time y'all see me, I'm like, especially my patrons, they've been seeing me a lot in this, like, red sweatshirt, but it's like, this is my at-home lounging little hackett, you know? Um, but anyways, today I wanted to have an open and honest discussion about where I am in recovery. Um... I debated, I've been debating during this video, this video is probably just going to be me ranting for 15 minutes with no clear um, journey, so if that bothers you, I do apologize, obvious trigger warning, but I will be talking about my eating disorder and my eating disorder recovery, and so if conversations and topics like that bother you, then please consider clicking off now. Before I get into it, I do have a few people to thank actually, so if you guys didn't know, this video is sponsored by my patrons and my YouTube members, and so I would like to give a few of my new patrons and YouTube members a quick shout out. So the first person I'd like to thank is Shaylee. Shaylee, thank you so much. Shaylee actually started off as a YouTube member and then she became a patron and for like a hot second I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? So <laughs> thank you so much for joining my Sunflower Fun tier. It is really appreciated. I'd also like to thank Michaela, who is a new patron. Thank you so much for joining. It means the world to me. It allows me to support my work, you know, and of course when I discuss certain topics, you know, it's bound to get demonetized and things like that. And I just really appreciate, you know, it's just, it's a really sweet gesture and I just really appreciate it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much. And I would also like to thank Patricia, Patric Patricia, I don't know why I said Patricia, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Um, Patricia, thank you so much for joining my YouTube members. Um, if you guys are interested, I have three different Patreon tiers. I have a $3, $5, and $10 tier, and my YouTube memberships are only a dollar. So, uh, let's get into it. So... I wanted to give you guys an update on my recovery process. I wanted to talk about a few different things um, within this video. Like I said at the beginning, this video has no clear, there's no clear direction. I'm just gonna be talking. Um, I don't know, I, I, I used to be very open about my eating disorder publicly. And I think that was a good thing. I think it was a good thing because, number one, it showed other black people that you could have an eating disorder. And I, I know that people think this is like, they probably don't get this, but I'm, I'm not kidding when I tell you. I literally thought that it was impossible for me to have an eating disorder because the only people I knew who had eating disorders were skinny white girls. And I was not a skinny white girl. <laughs> I was everything but that. And so I was like, there's no way I can have eating disorder. Like I'm not, you know, a 13 year old skinny white girl, so I don't have one. And that sort of, that sort of stereotype, that one idea of what an eating disorder looks like is the reason why so many people don't know that they're struggling, don't realize that they need to get help, and they don't realize how serious it is. And so I'm happy that I was really honest and open about my eating disorder. In the same breath, I can also admit that it's hard to be so open about something that's so personal. And it's very triggering sometimes because eating disorders are so difficult. It doesn't, it's not anyone's fault, but sometimes people can, you know, be really kind and and have no ill intentions, but what they just told me is so triggering, you know what I mean? And so sometimes, especially with recovery, I haven't been that open and and ready to talk about it. I really haven't been because it's it's mine and I want to hold on to it. And I don't want anyone to input their ideas um, onto it. At the same time, I do think that it's important for me to talk about it, number one, just as like an outlet, but number two, I think it's important that people know that I'm, like, I know that people know that I'm in recovery, and I know that people know that 
I am eating a lot more than I was. But I also want people to know that like there are struggles in recovery and just because like I'm really proud of the things I've achieved these past few months, like so proud, I can't even begin to tell you. I'm still scared and I still I still have struggles and I just wanted to talk about it. So, so like some of the things I've been struggling with, obviously like, hi, hello, hi, I'm vegan if you didn't know. And um, I do list veganism as one of the things that have helped me in recovery personally. And I know that's so backwards for a lot of people. And even for me, like a few months ago, I would have, like not even a few months ago, like a year ago, I would have never gone vegan because at that time it would have been bad, right? I was plant-based for a hot minute and I was still really struggling with my, like with feeling comfortable with eating, but I was plant-based. But once I made that ethical moral connection to animal rights and veganism, my whole framing on food changed. It became really challenging for me to feel bad about what I was eating because it's like this isn't contributing to things that I don't agree with, so how can I feel bad? Also, like, it's brought back this love of food within me because it's like the food that I'm eating represents so much more than just, like, the food. I don't know if that makes sense, but, like, I just get so much, I, I get so excited, like, trying new foods, and I haven't felt that in years, and I get so excited, like, cooking things for other people, and I get excited talking to people about, like, all the new foods that I'm learning how to cook and things like that, and that is a huge win and a huge step for me, you have to understand that, and I've been crushing a lot of my fear food um, goals, like, Last week, I drank regular juice. <laughs> I know, this sounds so stupid and lame, but I'm serious. Like, for a few years, I didn't drink juice if it wasn't, like, diet. And if it, like, or... Like, there were some juices that I would drink that had calories in them, but they would have to, like, serve a greater purpose, if that makes sense. So, like, like coconut water, I love coconut water. And I could drink coconut water without any fear because in my mind, it's like coconut water is so good for you and it has so many benefits and it tastes so good that I just didn't care. You know what I mean? Um, and this week, which you guys are actually going to see, I've been working on a what I eat in a week video and um, a few days ago, I cooked with oil and that is like such a radical thing for me to do. And I do think that going vegan has helped me in so many ways. Um, I don't really struggle with food anymore. Like, I don't really... There's still things I'm afraid of. There's still things that... Like, I cooked with oil that one time. Okay, I cooked with oil that one time. Is that something I'm going to regularly do now? Probably not. I'm not there yet. And that's okay. Um, but just even challenging... Like, the fact that I cooked with oil... And then didn't immediately like force myself to go walk or go work out or like change the way I was going to eat the next day. That's humongous. That's literally humongous. Like I can't even tell you how big of a deal that is for me and my recovery journey. That's a huge fucking deal. Um, so even though I don't really struggle with food anymore um, in the sense that I don't really feel guilty for eating. I don't really feel like if I eat something I can't eat the next meal or that I have to work out I don't really get that feeling what I've really been struggling with I think is like accepting my body that's really hard and um I think that's been the biggest and last night was one of the worst nights I've had in so long like um I just went to bed feeling like really bloated and I just didn't like the way I felt and um my brain was like, go weigh yourself, go weigh yourself, go weigh yourself. You need to know how much you weigh. You've probably like ruined all your weight loss progress, which I don't look at my weight loss as this like grand thing. You know what I mean? Like I spent two years, two, three years hating myself, belittling myself, not believing in myself. I spent two, three years freaking out my friends and family. Um, that's not something I'm proud of. I'm just, I'm not proud of the things I've done. 
um, while struggling with an eating disorder. So I don't look at my I don't look at my weight loss as progress. I just look at it as a product of my eating disorder. That's honestly what I look at it as. Um, because for those of you guys that don't know, I was obese. I, I was over 200 pounds and I lost over 100 pounds. And um, doing it in the way that I did it was terrible. And a lot of people, they're so quick to congratulate me. But the reality is I ruined my body. I ruined my relationship with food. Um, you know, and when I was obese, when I was fat, I was so much more confident about my body. It wasn't, I didn't even think about my body. It wasn't something that I dwelled on. It was just like, I'm fat. It is what it is, bitch. You either are down with it or you're not. If you're not, go away. If you are, cool, you can stay. I didn't care. I was so much more confident when I was like 200 pounds than I am now. And um, this struggle that I've had with my body has really really been difficult and last night was really hard and I literally just went to bed because <laughs> I went to bed so early because I I was like you can't be up thinking these kind of thoughts like you just need to go to bed <laughs> like because I didn't I was trying different like coping skills and nothing was working so I was like all right bitch we're just going to bed like <laughs> I'm killing the thoughts right now right here and um you know I'm struggling with my body and with accepting the weight gain. I know I've gained weight. I don't know how much. I'm not going to get on a scale because for me to step on a scale, honestly, it would be the equivalence of an alcoholic having one glass of wine. It would immediately spiral into something so chaotic, so toxic, and something I don't want. <sighs> Relapse for me is really not an option and I don't want to say that because this isn't my first like rodeo with recovery like I've sorry <laughs> I've been in recovery before I've been in, I've been like in recovery since like 2020 but I wasn't really taking it seriously I was still engaging in a lot of dangerous behaviors and I wasn't really like in it I was just kind of like being nicer to myself. So I was eating consistently, but I wasn't actually challenging my thoughts. I wasn't really challenging my food um, fears. I was just like eating consistently and then feeling really bad about eating. And I was just really engaging in a lot of toxic behaviors. Um, and for me, like I just can't relapse. I really can't because I've never gotten this far in recovery. And the idea of relapsing and the idea of having to get back to where I am now, it would just feel so impossible and like difficult and I really don't wanna go through all of that again. Like I really don't want to. And so for me, and so for me, even though I'm struggling right now a lot with my body, my body image, and accepting that I have gained weight, and accepting that my body looks a lot different than when it did a few months ago, accepting that is what I'm trying to learn how to do, and it's been really difficult. And for a few weeks now, I've really been wanting to get back into working out, because last year during quarantine, I had a little workout era, and I've never been someone who's into working out or fitness. <laughs> But what I liked about working out was it gave me discipline and it gave me like little goals and it felt really good to reach that those goals and I felt strong and that's why I want to work out like I don't want to work out to like lose weight like I don't want to work out to like look any different I just want to feel like stronger than I do now and I want to have that like discipline again in my life. But I've been avoiding working out because I don't want it to spiral into something out of control. And last night, it was just so hard for me because I was going through all these thoughts of like, okay, I don't want to work out because I don't want to get triggered back into an eating disorder. But every single day, um, with my body changing, it is triggering. It really is. So I, I'm, I'm going through this like weird 
like trigger tunnel <laughs> of just constantly feeling uncomfortable and triggered. And that's what recovery is. That's what recovery recovery is learning how to feel uncomfortable. It's learning how to change. It's learning how to to take the things that you used to do for comfort, the toxic, you know, problematic things you used to do to feel good about yourself. And it's learning how to use new and better things, you know. I can't relapse. I can't. My life with an eating disorder was so sad and it prevented a lot of the things that I want. Having an eating disorder is like being in an abusive relationship. It's like having a child and it's just way too much of a of a, a thing to have on my plate. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but I I literally cannot relapse. Like I cannot. <laughs> and I, I won't allow myself to. Like, And I I'm saying I won't allow myself to, but I also just want to be clear that I'm not trying to shame anyone for relapsing. Like, I've relapsed many times. Like, I used to relapse every week. Like, my my eating disorder recovery cycle basically would be me like, yeah, I'm going to go all in. Like, I need to let go of my eating disorder. And then, like, three days in, I would weigh myself and be like, okay, I'm still going to go all in. But I'm going to eat this less, I'm going to eat, like, less calories, and I'm going to work out more. And, of course, after a few days of that, it would just go back into a full eating disorder mode. And that's sort of what I would do for, like, and that cycle would last about a week to two weeks where I would just kind of do that over and over and over again. That's just not it. It's not it. I don't have the time for it. I don't, I don't have the patience, and I don't want it. The goals in life that I have, none of that consists of an eating disorder. I want to travel the world. I want to use my voice to speak up for things I believe in. I want to get more educated. I want to learn more. I want to, I want to exist. I want to exist and I want to live and sorry for crying. I wasn't expecting to cry in this video, but there was, you have to understand like for me to say that is really a huge thing. Because there were years in my life where I really didn't care about my life and I didn't care about people and I didn't care about this planet and I just didn't care and I was like, you know, if I die, I die, who cares? Like, I just really felt that way and, you know, especially with my eating disorder, there were some nights where I was so hungry and my heart was hurting so bad and I would go to bed and I would really wonder, like, am I going to wake up tomorrow? Am I going to be, like... You know, I would really wonder that and I just wouldn't care. I would go to, I just wouldn't care. I would just lay there. And I'm in such a better place now. There's so many things I want to do and I'm just so thankful to be alive. And there's so many, I really am. I'm just thankful to be here and I'm I'm thankful for the things I've been able to achieve. Um, And just the growth I've had and there's so many things I want to do and just relapsing is just not an option. It's just not, you know? <sighs> Sorry for crying. I really wasn't expecting to cry. I hate crying. I have the worst cry. I sound really ugly when I cry. And I look ugly when I cry. <laughs> I just, I don't like to cry. Well, I don't, there was a time in my life where I wouldn't allow myself to cry, but now I don't do that. <laughs> Um, But anyways, that is my recovery update. Basically, I'm killing it, okay? I'm doing things that I didn't think I would be able to do at this point. There was a time where I thought I would be like 50 and anorexic. (laughs) Um, There was a time where I thought I would have an eating disorder for like the rest of my life. Um, There are people, by the way, who are 50 with eating disorders. I'm not laughing at their struggles. I'm just laughing at the fact that I sort of was willing to accept a life of like misery for myself. Like I was just like, yeah, I'll just have an eating disorder for the rest of my life. Who cares? Like at one point, at one point, I literally told my therapist, like, 
well, you know, I don't think recovery is going to work out for me. Like, I just don't, I don't think that I'm actually ever going to be able to recover. So at this point, I think I should just focus on how to live with an eating disorder. Like, I told her that. And that's the stupid fuck you, like, like who, that makes no sense. You cannot live with an eating disorder. If you have an eating disorder, you are choosing to die. That is just the truth of the matter. And I don't want to die anymore. I really don't want to die. I want to live. I want to meet cows. <laughs> I want to go to more vegan restaurants. I want to grow my YouTube channel. I want to get better at French. I want to learn more languages. I want to go back to school. Maybe uh, maybe one day I'll learn how to drive. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, there's things I want to do. There's people whose concerts I haven't gone to yet. I haven't seen Rina Sawyama live yet. I haven't seen Charlie XCX live yet. I haven't even seen Lady Gaga live, okay? Things that I want to do, and I will not allow my eating disorder, no matter how much weight I gain, no matter how uncomfortable I get, I will not allow it to win. I can't. So that's where I am with my recovery, and Honestly, I'm so happy I filmed this because I already feel so much better. I think silence and like shame is what allows my eating disorder to slowly creep back in. I think for me speaking up when I'm struggling is really is what's going to help me stay on path with recovery. So, um Thank you so much for watching, um, if you have watched this much. Thank you so much for watching. If you are struggling with an eating disorder, if you know someone struggling with an eating disorder, there will be links to eating disorder recovery resources down in the description. Um, in every single one of my videos, by the way, I always have suicide um, resources, so that will also be in the description because it's always in the description. For my videos, again, a huge thank you to all my new YouTube page, uh, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube members and patrons. Um, I can't even express how much it means to me um, to have that support. It, it really does. Thank you guys for watching. Um, as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I will see you in the next one. Already, y'all. Bye. This bitch went out right as I said bye. That was so creepy. <laughs> bye.